Hey, it's Chronologically Gaming, the only channel that's perpetually retro because we're playing every video game in order of release. Where will we go? What will we find in the world of 1982? Welcome everyone to the end of March where we are playing everything. So if you went back to 1982 at this time and you just saw all the games we're going to see tonight, what would you think? Would you be impressed? Would it be an amazing video game experience? Let's find out. We last played Video Trek 88 for the IBM PC. Let's press forward and see our next game. We're next going to the Atari home computer, Atari 400 or 800, and this is War. What is it good for? Let's take a look at War, starting with nothing. There's no artwork, just a few screenshots. No box, so let's pop in and play some War. At the end of March, or at some point in March, 1982, Adventure International, why didn't we find a box for this one? This is by Stan Irwin, way to go Stan. There it is, Adventure International. Incredible. Yeah, couldn't pin down the box for this. And as we press forward playing every single game, I'm surprised when we don't find artwork. But we're going to have, uh, if we're playing every video game, you can you can bet that some of these are going to be lost or hard to, hard to come by. What is war? Is it worth playing? Oh, we're in. Do we want a new game or an old game? Let's go new game. How many players do we want? One. Do we want a short game or a long game? Short. Input a number. Oh, wow. They got 9,999 different variations. Okay, let's do the magic number 17. Handicap either side. No. Okay, we're in. We're playing War, which is a war game. It's a strategic top-down game. Now, it's giving me commands for all my units. They're very tiny at the top of the screen. So everything that's lit up as green at the top is my units, and everything down at the bottom in the dark blue is the computer. So it's giving me the command to move around. I'm going to go ahead and move south. Okay, so yeah, you use the cardinal directions, west, 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 and then you hit enter when you're done with that unit. So the next time the unit flashes, I'm going to move this one south, south, done, south, south. Yep, move them down. So you can see I'm just moving my units on the screen one at a time. South, yeah, so it is the very easy to play, at least pick up and play. Because every single unit per turn has a, a way that they can move around. And so I'm moving everybody. And let's see, move this one. Can I move off the grid? Yeah, there we go. And then I finish. And now the computer's going to do their movement. It's probably going to be really fast. Oh, wait, do I have to go back? There we go. Yeah, so after I finished my, all my unit's movements, then really quickly the computer did all their movements. So it's a bare-bones strategy game. It's, it seems like even farther viewpoint than we've seen before. So let's go keep going moving south. M movements, all, all my units moving down now. Doesn't use the Atari VCS joystick. I'm doing all this with just keyboard commands. Oh, can't cross the water. Okay. Well, then how in the world do we get over to the other side if there's a giant river between us? It also didn't have context because after playing the SSI strategy games, they say, you know, it's World War II. It's this certain battle at this time. This one's just, you got some units that are moving around. Now, bear in mind, most of the time, Adventure International on their box had information on the back that everything you would need. But we didn't have the box or manual for this one. So if it was 1982, you most likely would have found the, the box for it. There we go. So we finished our move. And obviously each piece has different uh, uh, varieties of st strategy, you know, like uh, what, what energy they have, range, attack power, all that stuff. So this is a, a, a very simple but easy to play strategy game uh, for 1982. It doesn't have the, um, the the flair of the SSI games, but bear in mind, those have a lot of stuff in the box to help you out. Reference cards, maps, and so forth. Oh, really? You did? <laughs> you did give me the cover? Well, there you go. So if it had the back, did it have the back of the box with the instructions too? Because usually it tells you, you know, how long it would take to play the game and then a little story of what units the, the units are or the, the, the lore of the game. At least in Adventure International does. Oh, at least for the Coco uh, one, right? Because this one, uh, it, it, it was the one just called War for the Atari home computer that was at some point in March was first available. Oh, very nice. All right, so that was a brief taste of war. Obviously, the strategy games, we can go a very long time because they're, they're, they're in depth. But for the pick-up-and-play 
like just jumping in and even though it didn't use a joystick to control the the fact that you knew what to do with the units on the screen uh, w w was v very good. So I'm going to say for the time, if you wanted to play a strategy game, you could go even higher than that. Um, but considering we've seen others already uh, by 1980 that were able to do this and a little bit more, I'm going to say three stars for war. Perfectly average for 1982. <laughs> oh, yes. So many games. But thanks again, El Curtis. We appreciate it. All right, let's see what our next game is. Where are we going now? Our very last game of March 1982. This is Warriors of Raz, Volume 1, Dunzin. Dunzin? This one, again, don't have a box on the TRS-80 version of it. There's lots of other home computers that have this one. So this one, we're just going to pop in and play again. Warriors of Raz, Volume 1, Dunzin. Released at the some point in March 1982 by Med System Software. Most likely, I'm going to do Dunzin. That's got to be the command for it, right? I am finding it hard to to have the original TRS-80 artwork and boxes. Some of the more popular ones, yes, but then the other ones that I want to showcase and play, the really cool arcade ones, the, some of them don't have the box I can find. So I just have a few screenshots. So here you go, Warriors of Raz, Volume 1, Dunzine, by Randall Don Masteler. We do go, Randall. Do we want to load a saved game? No, we don't. Do we want to have a saved character? We do not either. Welcome in this dungeon. You are to get a certain item. This item will be found in the lowest level. It is the Purple Tome of Quekas. Now, this game is a roguelike. So every time you play, it's random. Not just the dungeons, that opening scene when it says what item you need at the very bottom level, that's all random too. So it's a new experience every time. Lots of replayability. The roguelike experience is <laughs> interesting. We haven't seen the official rogue game. The one I was familiar with by Epics yet. But here we go with another roguelike. <laughs> yes, some of them did have incorrectly spelled titles. Well, with a name like Dunzin, I can see that happening. Okay, so we're in to make this character move. We do not need to type in cardinal directions like we did on Dungeon Quest or other role-playing roguelikes. I can move. Can I move and move to the side? Oh, I've left the dungeon. Oh, does that quit the game? You end your excursion reaching warrior level one. I just poured. Okay, so yeah. So if you want to leave the dungeon, I should have known. <laughs> that shows poor work. The Purple Tome of Quiviz is still, your job is not yet concluded. Yeah, 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 we'll re-enter, yes. A ghostly voice says, go away. You feel dizzy for a moment. Okay, you're finding yourself here. Now let's move to the right. Floor is extremely slippery. Press a key or you'll fall. Oops, you fell on your butt. Now, what's cool about this one is every time that you get to a certain place, it randomizes things that happen like that. The floor was slippery and I needed to do something. I believe that was the very first time we had a quick time event in a video game. That, that one moment, that brief second was a quick time event. Quick, push a button because the floor is slippery and we missed it. So we move around. Watch out. The floor opens up beneath you. Press a key. Oh, you weren't quick enough. You fell in. Three points alive. Two points left. Move. Yep. Okay, we got out of the way. This one's really tricky. Whenever I was testing the game out, I didn't have this many random terribleness happening. You've encountered three warriors. So now we can choose to fight or release. The warriors decline to fight. Okay. So I'll say release then. We don't need to fight them if they don't want to fight us. All right. So you make your way around. Everything is building itself from the beginning. A strange shadow on the floor. Do you think that's wise? No. Wrong. <laughs> Natural recovery. You've healed back to one point of defense. Okay, very nice. Move on to the right side. And what is this? You're in room... Oh, okay. Thank you. It's labeled room C. We found a pearl bracelet worth 200 gold. Brings your total trove to 200 gold pieces. Now, you notice that the text is going very, very fast because we've uh, we've kind of overclocked the Model 3 that we're playing on. So this is not a genuine 1982 experience. We're going a lot faster. That's why the instructions go through pretty quick. The cool thing about Dungeon or the whole Warriors of Ross trilogy is it combines the roguelike experience like we saw with uh, Beneath Apple Manor and things like that to the games like Black Sage where it makes random moves and you have to make decisions in those rooms. All right, so let's continue down on this side. Okay, no, you crashed into the wall. We'll move our way up then. Crashed into that wall. There we go. Work our way up through natural recovery. You've healed back to one point of defense. Oh, good. So keep going around. Exploring the dungeon. A voice says, go away. You feel dizzy for a moment. Now you find yourself here. 
lots of randomness that happens in the game. Not just the level building itself, but what can happen when you walk with... <laughs> Are you happy with that? Yes. <laughs> right. Keep moving on to the right. And this is room J. What happens in room J? The room is empty. Okay, so nothing's in here. An old hermit named Mad Marvin throws a rock and hits you in the chest. Then he runs away chuckling. Lots of imagination, too, because you obviously, you obviously see I am playing as the letter Y. And when things happen and occur in the room, it's only the text that you're getting. So in a way, it's almost like an interactive fiction. Well, interactive fiction is kind of stretching. It's more like a text adventure game also. So it's mixing lots of things together that we've seen before. Oh, who's this? Two dwarves. Do they want to fight? We can fight, hide, run, bribe, or subdue. So let's see how our fighting style goes. We're going to go for fight. Now, it asks what blow we want. We can do specific area. I want to do the head. You're going for the head. Press any key when you feel lucky. You hit extra hard with 12 points. Dwarf stops two points in the head. Inflict two, 10 points of damage, and the dwarf is defeated. But we're not done yet. We still have one more. Let's try to fight them. It's like rolling the 20-sided die to see what happens. So let's do it again. Go for the head. Press any key when you feel lucky. Oh, you missed. His blow is going to go for your left arm. He missed. All right, so let's go again for the head. No, not the not the G. Groin. I guess that's groin if I say G. Go for the head. Press any key when you feel lucky. You missed. Let's see what the dwarf does. He's going for the chest. And he missed. So battles play out in turn-based, but um, you can see we're, we're able to specifically say what we want to hit. All right, let's go for head again. And we miss the head again. Maybe we, yeah, let's try the eye. He's going for our head. Oh, he hits with four points of force. Armor stops four points in that region. We have one point left in that area. Five overall. All right, let's go for eye. Okay, it doesn't understand eye. We'll go C for chest then, right? Going for the chest. You hit six points of force. Dwarf st stops two. The dwarf isn't defeated. Okay, so go again for chest. Ten. Dwarf stops two points. Dwarf isn't defeated yet. So you see how it works when each time you go... Oh, he's going for our head again. Okay, he missed. But every time that you play, it is permadeath. So whenever we, this character dies, that's it. So if, if we you know, make this fight and it doesn't work very well and we die, then that's it. You just start over in the game again. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> this is the first one, too. The very first one on the TRS-80. So this series we're going to see... I think it's three or four in the series for the uh, Warriors of Roz. So let's try G for groin. No, it doesn't understand G. Darn. What about feet? No, F doesn't... Can't go for feet. What about arm? No. R for arm? His blow's going for your head. Oh, if you say too many things wrong, he just goes. Doesn't even... Now let's see if you escaped. Oh, E is to escape. I'm sorry. A fight is inevitable. Okay, go for the head. Any key when you feel lucky? And we missed again. Oh, nice. You found the ad? Did you find anything for the box itself? Any box or paperwork for the original? All right. L for leg? Doesn't understand leg. Okay, we'll go for chest again. Dwarf stops two points in the chest. Dwarf still isn't defeated. So we took out two more. I'm going to go try for head again. Come on. Oh, missed him in the head. Now, every single time we do this, he's going for the abdomen. <laughs> Thanks, Dwarf. He's showing us all the body parts we can hit. We're still alive. Five points overall. Go for abdomen. Oh, well, how do you do abdomen? A, B? Yes, A, B, go for the abdomen. Ab abdomen. Dwarf stops two points in the abdomen. And still not defeated. Oh, we did no points of damage. He's going for the head. He misses. Longest fight we've had to do, though. I'm going to try head again. Missed the head. Probably they're giving different uh, lower chance of hitting if you go for the head. Uh-oh, going for the chest. Armor stops four points. Oh, it's with great sorrow. I report your untimely death. Better luck next time. As always, another death here on Chronologically Gaming. But that's the first volume of Warriors of Raz, Dunzin. Of all the games we've seen to this point, I love a good roguelike. And this one incorporates different things. It isn't um, as in intuitive and playable as other ones we play, uh, we've checked out. But I do love that it gives you fa it has faster speed. Well, no, the faster speeds is because we overclocked it. So in 1982, it was a little bit slower. But I'll still go three and a half stars for Warriors of Raz. It's roguelike. And it's it's the randomness is so fun. Oh, full page drawing? Yeah, it's not the same as a box artwork. It's so hard to find the uh, the the new box artwork. 
Yeah, so uh, a great title uh, if you want to play a roguelike. It is one player. And the reason why I wouldn't go higher is because we played a, f a Fracas up to this point. Fracas allowed you to have, I think, five uh, people at one time alternating play the, through a roguelike. But uh, still a good t good time in 1982. All right, so let's see what our next game is. We've now entered April of 1982. This is our very first title, Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. The Alibaba. The one we played on the Atari home computer that I cannot have enough of. It's so fun. This one is the Apple II version. Let's take a look at Alibaba and the 40 Thieves and see what the Apple II is like. Starting with the box. Looks pretty much just like the Atari version. So this is by Quality Software. Yeah, the exact same one, I believe. Yep, still by Stuart Smith. For the Apple II. So he ported this one over from the Atari. You can see it has fantasy, sultans, thieves, fierce, friendly creatures guide your alter ego Alibaba through the thieves' mountain den in an attempt to rescue beautiful princess, treasure, magic, and great danger await you. Any number can play. Up to 17 friendly characters. Humans, elves, halflings, dwarves can join together to fight off thieves, amass great wealth, and rescue the princess. Each player has its own character or group of characters. Now, this is interesting because I think this might be the Atari box. Because I don't think the Apple has that. But it does say the high-res co high color graphics because it does do that. <laughs> yes. Let's go rescue the princess. Let's see what the art we have for Alibaba. Oh, this is kind of cool. This is the alternate box that would have been in uh, Japan because they brought this over to Japanese computer or the Apple II in Japan. So just for uh, for kicks, there it is. And uh, we have the advertising flyer now for, available for the Apple II fantasy role-playing adventure for uh, uh, Apple II and Atari personal computers. So we finally get to see it on the Apple II. Need 48K to play this one. Yes. And we also have the full map of, oh, well, at least and maybe that's not the full map. It's part of it. But you can see it is a top-down view similar to adventure, but I'd say even better. You don't even, you don't have the one pixel on the screen. But I can't, say, I can't say for Apple II. I know for the Atari, it is one of the best games we ever checked out. There's the five and a quarter floppy disk. Uh, <laughs> front and back of the floppy disk. An example of the screenshot. And we got the manual for the Apple version. Yeah, by Stuart Smith. Way to go, Stuart. How do you load it? We'll breeze by that. To play all Alibaba, follow the directions that appear on the video. The game is self-explanatory. You do not need to read the rest of this bullet booklet to play Alibaba. But it might help. And they said that on the Atari version, too. You don't need the manual. You'll figure it out. And it's true. It was, it was very intuitive. All right, so they have the story of Alibaba on the left side. And they're kind of slightly basing it on the true story of Alibaba. I mean, loosely. It has the same idea of um, can you do as well as Alibaba did, which was uh, take out the number of people and or no, continue your complete your quest without killing anyone, like almost stealth-like. Rescue the princess without harming a living thing or allowing the princess to do so without adding any other players to help him. It's a very difficult way to win the game. If you succeed, you'll receive the author's personal congratulations if you do that. So no patch like they do on the consoles. But if you play this, you have the op option to add more people. And that's what I loved about the Atari version. The Atari home computer can have four slots for, for joysticks. And so you could plug in four Atari VCS joysticks and you and four friends could play Alibaba and it's a turn-based game, so you take turns, but everything can be done on the joystick. You don't even need the keyboard. All the commands you can do from the joystick. It's so cool. So let's see what happens with the Apple version of the game. This one can use keyboard or paddles. Paddles, you're not going to have the same type of control you did with the Atari VCS joystick. And, oh, no way. It's, it's not really the same. So they only have keyboard and paddles, but the paddle option is... Uh, Instead of pushing a key on the keyboard, you rotate the paddle until your choice is highlighted. So all it is is allowing you to use the paddle to select choices, but that means you can't even move Alibaba. Controlled by paddle zero. If you add a new player... Okay, so you can plug in two paddles, so two people can use, but I don't know how many other people you can add after that. The four people at one time, though, on the Atari was so cool. And then here, here's the commands you can use, and they're going to be displayed on the screen. Like uh, attacking, defending, moving around, seeing your lot, adding players. And uh, they're, they're giving you examples here, but you don't even need it because it shows you in the game what to do. All those commands are displayed. Yeah, all of this. Starting in the new room, adding someone else, changing difficulty. And then you have different scenarios as well. Th th this is one of the best action role-playing games 
in, 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 in terms of scale, they, they give you so many options and it works so well. Well, I haven't seen the Apple version. I, I'm, I'm talking about the Atari. That's the one we played before. They even have um, uh, trading, how fighting works. And then the world of Alibaba. And you can use this because whenever you play this, it has s simple puzzles, very simple puzzles in the game. And this helps you um, interpret them. And then all the battle specifications. What's going to happen whenever you hit someone else? Because it is turn-based battles. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it, L. Curtis B. All right, so we also have the character tables. I don't think they had this on the Atari one. And we have the manual for it, too. It breaks down everybody so you know what you're going to be coming against. And what's really cool is in Alibaba, you move to a room. It tells you what everything is. So if a few of the pixels don't make sense, they, they explain them. It's so, it's so cool. All right, so let's see. After the manual, we have... Oh, the map. It's the same one, right? Yeah, same map. So we can pull it up if we need to. All right, it is now the beginning of April, 1982. It's time to play Alibaba and the 40 Thieves for the Apple II. Really excited for this one. Does it live up to the Atari version? Yes. And then they went for some music tunes in the beginning. Oh, and it responds the way I want to, yes. So we can use keyboard or paddles. Now, I'm gonna try paddles first, but I'm not gonna be impressed with it. Turn your paddle until the choice is highlighted and then press the paddle button. Oh my gosh, no way. It's, okay, we'll do, begin a new game. But you have to move the paddle back and forth, so it's like, what? just use a keyboard. All right, so we're in the home. Can we move with Alibaba? No way, you can't control him at, okay, so on the Atari version, you could move with the joystick and then decide your commands by pushing the red button. Here, the paddle is, if I wanna move Alibaba, I have to use the paddle and move it to the arrows. Good gosh, no way. Okay, so how do we start this over? No, we're not using paddle controls. I thought it'd be something similar to what it was in the Atari, but no. Okay, we're going back in. This time I'll just do keyboard controls. Well, that's a shame because the Atari version had a much better control scheme. When you move the joystick up, Alibaba moved up. Worked pretty good. Okay, so let's go keyboard only for input, but everything should be displayed on the screen. And then new game, is that N or M? M to begin new game, I guess. New game is mm, new game. Okay, so we're in Alibaba's home. Now we don't have any controllers at all. We're just using keys. And you can see the controls are up, left, down, and right using I, J, K, and M. If you look down, if you have a keyboard nearby, it's kind of works. You can see I can move Alibaba around. And then if I go up to the next room, it's now gonna say there's the door, there's a door, and there's a door, and it flashes for it. And then some rune writing. So it tells you what everything is. I didn't know that was rune writing, but I'm, now I know. And also on your first turn, you can attack options and defend. So if I do options and I say you have special options, uh, drop armor, drop gold, begin move. So if I do special options, now you can add a player, see your lot. So if I wanted to add someone, who can I add? So I can start a new player in this room or a new player in the first room. So let's do new player in the first room and we can add, oh, add Luthien? No, 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 let's add someone else. Scheherazade, there we go. So we push I and I'm just following the instructions. Everything down below has all the commands. And now Scheherazade is now in the, the bottom. And if I just go to begin move, I move to the right. This is still huge for 1982 because we played games that either the commands are in the manual instead of displayed on the screen. And this is something that, th there's a lot of action role-playing games that want to have, oh, and then we take over with Shahrazad. They, they want to be able to do this, but they just don't implement it as well as Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. So big props to Stuart Smith. All right, so now we're taking control of two different people. And the door creaks, but remains shut. Can't go in that one. Okay, so let's go with Alibaba. And also, I go to the door. I don't have to push D for door or open door. I just go in the direction of the door, and the door opens. That's the way it should be. Look at this. Door creaks, but remains shot. Okay, so we know we can't go in that one. And then I'll switch with Alibaba. 
and I'm open. And move back to Scheherazade. And then here's the runes. The oracle rune reveals, to rescue the princess unaided, attack only the unseen. When I first played this on Atari, I wasn't aware of the story. You know, don't kill anyone and get to the princess without having any help. I wanted to have all four people um, plug in my the Atari joysticks and then play. The rune explodes! Okay, ouch. Maybe we got hurt a little bit. But the first thing I did was I went to the left and I was starting to just attack random people that I didn't need to attack. So if you see the the video footage, I'm just amazed that you can play the game and how well the game plays. And I just wanted to go hit somebody. And you don't need to do that. Uh, it's it's meant to be played as a uh, more of a puzzle game. So you can see here I moved into the Royal Library and we have more rune writing and it's pointing it all out. Flashing it, telling you what it is. Yeah, welcome to the real gaming show. It's now the beginning of April 1982, and this is Alibaba and the 40 Thieves for the Apple II. So th the reason why this succeeds and others don't do as well is because this one is so intuitive. It works e easily. I'm just going to avoid the runes. It's kind of funny because the library is meant to be a training room. So you can go there, read the runes, and it tells you about tips and tricks on how to play the game. All right, so let's go back to Alibaba, go in this room. Now we're at the Foothill Cemetery. Looks like we got some enemies in here. And you can see the, the zombies now are making their moves. <laughs> There's a witness zombie. <laughs> Every time you have a turn, you have so many moves before it's done. And when you walk over a treasure chest, you got it. Treasure chest reveals 50 gold ducats, and that's it. I didn't have to push anything. I just walked over it and I got the ducats. Easy. And then now we switch to the Sultan's Palace. This is where I was attacking the Sultan. You didn't have to. You're not supposed to. I did it anyway just for fun. But I didn't know what I was doing. I just wanted. I was just amazed at how well the game worked. Okay, right, let's go to the right. I'll leave the Sultan's area. So you can see when this is, we're back in the library. Can we go through this door? Yeah, so it opens from this side. Then work our way down. But we're in control of two different characters at the same time. So in 1982, if, if you had an Apple II, or I'd say Atari... Bring your friends over and play this. Let's see what happens. Jabs at Scheherazade. Ha! Just a scratch. Scheherazade's feeling rather weak. Big zombie. Leaps in the flying tackle. Wrestles with the foe. And he misses! He does a flying tackle and misses. And then the witness zombie is just running away. <laughs> and we're back with Alibaba. Moves past. And we're now back with Scheherazade. Let's see if we can get here. Failed to escape. So I cannot leave my spot I am now. Uh, let's go ahead and try attacking. Let's see what happens. Hits the big zombie. Ouch. Big zombie still has a lot of fight left. Uh oh, did I turn into a zombie? Small zombie leaps into a flying tackle, a tackle and wrestles with the foe. But they miss Scheherazade. He's too good. Big zombie whacks Scheherazade. I no, don't hurt Shahrazad. Shuffles off to this mortal coil. Shahrazad is dead. <laughs> oh, sorry, witless zombie, not witness zombie. So the witless zombie, the one that was running away. That's funny. Make our way to the right here. And now Shahrazad is dead. Any items that he had if he was carrying, would be in, end up here. So we're back in the cemetery. Let's see if I can make my way around the witless zombie. Okay, there's the two zombies that killed Scheherazade. And there is the treasure that Scheherazade had. Oh, what is this? Thief just showed up. I'm gonna go to the, the bottom and see if I can get away from him. It's Salaman. Billowing cloud of dust envelops the wall. What? He's destroying, taking out one of the walls? Okay, zombies are trying to get me. We're going to run down. Oh, the witless zombie's trying to come in. So if you're outside the zone of control, you can escape. Looks like we made it past. Yeah, he's taking out the wall. So another enemy is destroying one of the walls. I'd be curious to see if the zombies destroy him. Or they start... Yeah, I think they are going to attack. So cool. All right, so now we're at the mountain... Some rune writing, there's a door, and it's flashing everything. It tells us what things are. There's the treasure chest we can walk over and see. And then that is a trading outpost. Thank you, game. See, it tells us everything. 
Oh, she! You're right, it is a she. I kept saying he. Oh, gosh. Apologies for all Shahrazad fans out there. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, let's go to the right side. She told the story. Alright, we have a mountain scorpion. I have no idea what's going to happen. But this one has 50 gold ducats inside. Got some more money for Alibaba. Mountain scorpion's coming at us. And let's attack it. And we can see attack above, right below. Let's attack to the right. And this is the direction where the... Uh, we jab the scorpion, who unharmed growls ominously. Oh, great. Fails to tackle the enemy. Misses Alibaba. And go again. Try for another one. I don't know if we can. He might be too strong. We can't even fight scorpions yet. We miss. This is not good. The mountain scorpion leaps into a flying tackle. <laughs> the scorpion is leaping into a flying tackle. All right, can we get out of here? No. Wait, breaks free? Yes. Go, run. Keep going. Yep. Defend. Let's see if he... The scorpion is wrestling with us. We can tell everybody that we wrestle with a scorpion. <laughs> and there you go. Another death. Alibaba departs for the land of the living. The other thing that makes this momentous is it's taking a top-down view, moving from room to room with role-playing elements and, I mean, it's got so many different things going for it. However, it is not the same as the Atari version. So sadly, I can't give it as high. I was about to give it five because I loved it so much when we saw it on the Atari, but it's still not that high up. I'm going to say four stars for Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. It's still an incredible game for 1982. All right, so after that, let's see what is happening now. We're going to Alien Ambush for the Apple II. Let's take a look at Alien Ambush, starting with the artwork. I think all we have is, yeah, the five and a quarter floppy disk and a screenshot, and that's it. Let's play some Alien Ambush at some point in the beginning of April 1982. What is Alien Ambush all about? Do we need to fast forward? No, we don't. Oh, look at that. It looks like an arcade. Got the Starfield scrolling in the background. Very nice. All right. And, oh, it's in. We're, we're in right off the bat. It's paddle controls. So we got some heavy drifting <laughs> with, with the controls, but... But it's fixed shooter. Presentation's really nice. And enemies <laughs> are, are breaking apart, but they go faster. So it's almost like we're playing a, a ricochet game. We got a different enemy every single time. So a new one came down, and it was pretty much the same, or had the same mechanic. They just bounce around the screen, and you see how long you can last. I have one bullet that I can shoot at a time, so I can't just keep going over and over again. I also can't do anything else but move left and right. So it's a very classic shooting uh, space shooter. There you go. So that's pretty fun uh, for 1982. I'm going to say that's pretty standard, actually. About three stars, an average game for 1982. Yeah, I like it. So there's Alien Ambush for the Apple II, but that's not all. We also have Alien Ambush. Alien Ambush for the Atari home computer. Is it the same? You never know. These could be totally different games. Let's take a look at the box for Alien Ambush on the Atari. You need 16K for this one. They have comic for the front, bo front box by Peter Focos. Way to go, Peter. Make sure you pronounce that one right. Mr. Focos. 
And flip it over in the back, software author Peter Focus has created Alien Ambush, a space-age nightmare. This high-res, full-color arcade game is written completely as assembly language to give those nasty aliens every advantage. If you have access to 16K with the uh, Atari 800 with a disk drive and you're and you're hot for some new thrills, Alien Ambush was written for you. Be warned, it just got a lot tougher to survive in space. With, is that a screenshot or is that another like manufactured? Yeah, I think it's manufactured. It's not a real screenshot of the game on the back of the box. Any other artwork we have for Alien Ambush? Nope, that's it. After the box and for other versions, we have this one's by Micro D. We even have one that's a trainer version of it. But at the beginning of April 1982, this is Alien Ambush for the Atari home computer by Micro Distributors. It looks about the same. Now, we didn't get the manual to see what happens if we put option. Nope, nothing. If I push the option button on my Atari 800 or the select button, so let's push start. And we're in. Yes. And <laughs> we die faster. We did have music playing in the background, though. Oh, and the enemies take more than one hit after they, they break apart again? It's throwing me for a loop. I went from Apple II to this, and I thought it'd be simple. No, they're, they fall down at you, so when you shoot them, you need to get out of the way. Tricky, Peter. Very tricky. All right, let's go against pushing start. Gosh, yeah, it's it's difficult because the enemy's coming down at you. So if you shoot, you have to make sure they're at the top of the screen before. Yeah, it's blasting something down after they're shot, and they didn't do that on the Apple II. Also, the control for the Apple II was paddle, so I could move left and right a lot faster. This one, this is the only speed I have. What you're seeing, the slow, it's like a, sl a slower movement back and forth. Let's go again. Can I get any faster? Oh, but you can fire faster on this one. Yeah, if you hold the, if you hold the red button down, it just keeps firing. Let me see if it's the same every, no, it's just whenever it leaves the screen. Okay, so it's the same. It's w one bullet uh, at a time. But for, man, it's it's so cool playing these arcade games, and they're different. It's not the exact same experience on... Alright, we'll just hold that button down and fire. Nope, that won't work either. <laughs> They've ambushed us. It's alien ambush. Now, I was pushing the select button and option button, and I'm wondering if I cranked the difficulty up, but I didn't see any indication on the screen. <laughs> because the enemies in the Apple II did not have some residue flying down after they got hit. Let's go. Wow, yeah, and also you are hitting... Your ship is slightly higher than where the enemies go down. When they pass past the screen, they can bounce down and then hit you again. I wouldn't fault it that because if this is one of the games I had to play on my Atari, I would play this over and over and over again. Oh, come on. <laughs> All right, last try. Wow. It might be just because you can't move left and right quite as fast as you could on the Apple II. And they bounce off the bottom, so you have to consider that when you're moving left and right. Wow. Woo, that's pretty tricky. So that's Alien Ambush for the Atari. Now, I could maybe say it's slightly less of a, a rating, but honestly, it's so close. I'm just going to go three stars, too. It's a perfectly average game for 1982. I love playing arcade games on the home computer. And what's also cool about the channel is most people talk about console games, or they focus on only one computer. Since we're doing everything, we've seen every, we've seen every computer and every game that they had up to this point. It's so fun. All right, let's press forward and see our next game. We're going to the arcades. This is Ant Eater in the arcades. Let's see what Ant Eater is all about, starting with the artwork. This one is published, I believe, by Tago. There it is, Tago Electronics. 
Convert to Profit with Tago's Turn of Profit. So this is another arcade conversion kit. You took the same arcade cabinet and you just swapped out the marquee maybe and a, a few a few things to make an easy, cheaper alternative. Oh, great. Yeah, this one's pretty fun. This one has a few different games on the front. I think you can show oh, what well, you can convert from, I bet, right? Conquest and Calypso, which we haven't seen those, but Anteater is our first one. There's the example of the arcade cabinet where you are controlling an Anteater's tongue. Mark this down on all the things we've controlled. We are now in control of an animal's tongue. Another picture of the arcade cabinet with our PCB. And then the control panel has... Pretty simple, actually. It looks like the arcade conversion. I wonder if that's even the original for Anteater. And for controls, we have a four-way joystick because this is kind of like a maze game. And then we have the tongue return button. And that's it. There's our arcade marquee for Anteater. Oh, don't let the ants bite you. In the butt, Anteater. All right, no manual, but let's go to the arcades. It's the beginning of April 1982, and this is Anteater, developed by Stern Electronics, published by Tago. Yes. This is it. Got to know what the point value is for the ant larva, ant worm, and queen ant. Push the button to retract the tongue, eat the queen to destroy all the ants. When the sun goes down, the spider comes out. Sneak up behind the worm. But don't let that ant get your tongue. You got to get the ant with the tip of your tongue only. Yes, only the tip of the tongue is safe. Thanks, Chiptune. Every little bit helps because playing game by game over every game in order of release. Oh, I don't know everything about every game. I will eventually, but uh, when we first start up games, any help you can give me is always always good. All right, let's put a coin in and push start. Okay, now we're in for real. And then when we get oh wait, that's right. Don't get the worm in front you gotta make sure the worm gets behind you is everyone following all this ant ear lore so now we can go get oh can't go that way let's go this way and go there not gonna get me buddy Oh gosh, yeah, so you gotta make sure that tongue goes down the center because an ant comes on the screen and that's it. The ant worm bonus. They do save the dots. It's just like any other maze game or a dot collecting game. And you gotta work your way back up, bring the tongue up, so make sure the tip of the tongue gets to the ant and hit the back of the caterpillars for it to work. But they just keep on coming. Like, you see there's an ant coming up there. Oh, quick. And you can use the button to s slide it back, right? Where is it? There it is. Yeah, that's it. Oh, what's the spider mean? Get away from the spider? Don't let the spider touch you. If he touches my tongue, what happens? Okay, nothing. Oh, but the ant. Yeah, the ant can't get the, the, the other part of the tongue. I see. I see. You won't get the best of me, anteater. Control in okay. Uh, how do you put in your name? Move the stick, change the letter. Oh, pull down. Got it. There we go. Are we even on there? We are fourth place. All right, let's put another coin in. Go again. Yeah, great idea for a maze variant. And I know we're going to get another ant. Yep, there he is. And then quickly go back. Oh, hurry, hurry, hurry. We don't got time for this. We'll get you and you and then you and then work our way here. So now we're looking for another ant. And if it happens, then we just retract the tongue really, really fast. Like there. Oh, yeah, not going to fall for that one. Oh, and you can stop the retraction. So your tongue will retract, and then it'll come back after that. Or you can say where you want it to stop at a certain point. Like that. Oh, but don't get the tip of the tongue on the spider. Of course. And it saves your position of what you did for the dots and you're trying to clear the screen. 
I don't think I've ever seen the next screen on Anteater. Because by the time you get to the bottom... Wait, the super bugs, quick, get them! Oh, nice! It clears everything on the screen. I should have waited for that one. If only I knew. There you go. Great job, Anteater. Move yourself to the next level. Racking up the points. Oh yeah, they changed the color up. <laughs> okay, we'll stop it there. Now, in the arcades, another charming game. Um, what, what I've been told, this one isn't as popular as what they end up making on the computer called, called Oil's Well. So when we see that one, which comes out, comes out next, the, that's going to be the more popular title than any year. But I still say this one's great. If you think of all the arcade games we've seen up to this point, it's still a fixed screen game. And it's still a uh, t taking the, the idea of Pac-Man or the pellet munching like on head on from Sega. Uh, I, I still would say at three and a half stars. I wouldn't say anything higher than that because it's not it, it's on one screen and the, 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 the game mechanic isn't like a, 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 something super addictive. But I'll say three and a half stars for Anteater. Oh yeah, there we go. Chip 2's on the same same mind frame. All right, so after the arcades, where are we going now? From radio We're going back home on the TRS-80. Here's Apple Panic on the original TRS-80. Our Model 3, if we bought it for the mo that amount of money. No box for this one, just a few screenshots. Let's pop it and play Apple Panic on the TRS-80. Published by Funsop, developed by Yves Limpreur. Way to go, Yves! The beginning of April, 1982. Now, it's got to be Apple, right? It's got to be. And it still makes no sense. Apple Panic was because it was a space panic on the Apple computer. Now, we're on other computers, and they're all still called Apple Panic. That's brand recognition right there. You got to say Apple so everyone knows what you're talking about. But, I mean, we're on the TRS-80. It, it should be the Radio Shack Panic. Published by Funsoft. Ooh, quick, someone call that number. Can we talk to someone at Funsoft now? I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, nice effect, 3D Apple Panic. Apple Panic? All right, space for instructions. We kind of know how to play Apple Panic, but let's see what it has. Destroy the little monsters chase. Oh, they don't even call them apples. They're little monsters chasing you by digging holes in the brick floors. Once the monster has gotten stuck in the hole, you have to knock it through by beating it over the head. If you get the monster too late, it may crawl out of the hole and get you. See, violence in video games has been around for a long time. We're beating the monsters over the head. That, that can't be good for the small children that watch the show, right? Use the arrow keys and move space bars to dig. Okay. One or two players goes in the game. And we're in. Oh, so cool. The adapter works. So I'm playing this with the controller. Or, I'm sorry, a joystick, not an actual controller. So let's see. Uh, <laughs> now, he's not digging the hole like the other games. I'm actually smashing through, so I can't do the hole in front or behind me. That means that you have to fall through the hole. Can I fall through too and still live? Okay, good. No fall damage. All right, I think they're learning something here. Let's see if this one falls in. No. Okay, good. We got one. And we'll smash him through. And it covers the hole up afterwards. Okay. But that means you're forced to fall through the hole, which is different than the other, any of the other Apple Panics we've paid, played. And at this point, I think we've played seven Apple Panics. Seven different ones. Come on, take the bait. Yes. But responds well, plays well. And of course, we, we are pretty spoiled. We're playing with the joystick adapter on the TRS-80. It's supposed to be using the keyboard, but I will take it. Slightly different than the other ones we've, we've checked out. Oh, listen to that. I believe that's the best music we've ever heard on the TRS-80 right there. What you just heard was the best thing as far as musical tunes on the TRS-80. The creativity is always going to be there with the developers with these video games. We've had the creativity go through the roof on a lot of this stuff. So the things that are lacking would be sound and music. We haven't really seen a lot of heavy sound, like uh, unless you consider the arcade games. Pac-Man comes out and has music all over the place. Oh, don't fall through the floor yet. No, not yet. 
and then graphically they've been using the, the the programming creativity to make some really amazing graphics already i'm i'm impressed with how the graphics look in 1982 but the only thing that i see was lacking is lacking is the sound we have we have had games talk to us which is kind of cool let's see if anyone takes this one so the talking is there in vi the video games we've seen a few of those but it's still uh, iffy well th this one was iffy apple panic we could barely hear it yeah that's really impressive i don't even think they use the same it didn't even sound, sound like the sound like the same hardware was that really the same hardware as the trs80 to make sounds like that yes there we go All right, so there's Apple Panic for the TRS-80. As usual, I, I really enjoy the TRS-80, how it's able to, after all this time, still make games that look this good on no, with no color. So um, I'm going to still say three stars for Apple Panic. We played lots of Apple Panics, but this is still a blast for 1982, definitely. So three stars for Apple Panic on the TRS-80. It should have been Radio Shack Panic, but whatever. All right, let's press forward and see our next game. Yes, this is the Commodore VIC-20, and this is Arachnoid. Let's see what Arachnoid's all about, and if it is really good for the Commodore VIC-20. Let's start with the box. Swarming ants, buzzing flies, deadly wasps. Another one by UMI. We flip it over the back, and your spiders just laid a nest of eggs, and it's up to you to protect them until they hatch. But this is a challenging assignment indeed. Thousands of hostile ants are swarming their way to the nest to devour all your eggs. Joystick is allowed. Instant pause. They've been advertising that a lot now. The, the games can pause. Like, that's the biggest thing. Coolest thing. When the Atari 5200 comes out, that'll be one of the selling points. It's a console that you can pause. Your arcade games live. Interlay scan. Restart your game at any time. Outstanding graphics and sound effects. This is another variant of Centipede. If you haven't guessed, but we're playing as a spider instead. This is by Alan Pulsifer. Way to go, Alan. We have no manual for this one. A few different variations and changes to the cartridge, but it's a cartridge. Let's pop that cartridge in our VIC-20 and play some Arachnoid. By United Microware Industries, UMI. It's another like we're playing an arcade game. Does it go into attract mode? It does. Oh, so cool. Okay, so let's go. I'm pushing the button on our Commodore VIC-20 joystick. I think it's loading. Is that in? Yes, we're... No, we're not in. That's still the attract mode. Okay, we're ready. Go load. Maybe I got to push the keyboard. Anytime now. Okay, now we're in. Yes. Okay, so it works. It is very much like Centipede. It's weird that I'm controlling this with a joystick and not a paddle. The programming done on the joystick is really, really good. It almost feels like I have the control as if I had a paddle. But I have this freedom. Look at this. <laughs> it's, it's more than Centipede. I can go all over the screen. I don't, I'm not, I'm not uh, down to the bottom third of the screen. Arachnoid lets me go everywhere. And I have super... Okay, I have one shot at a time, but I can cancel the shot out. We need a term for that, because I've seen the three other games that can do this, where you shoot, and if you wait for the one shot, it goes to the end of the screen, but if you want to rapid fire, you can have this, like, super fast fire, but it's r right in front of you. The shot cancels, doesn't continue past the screen. We don't get mushrooms, we only get circles. Yeah, I I'm gonna call it the cancel shot. If you can cancel the shot, you can get this really, really fast rapid fire, and then move in nice and close. To beat them up, but the mushrooms aren't destroying. They're they're permanently there. Yeah, if the mushrooms don't break down, I think we're gonna be in trouble. How am I gonna move around the screen? Or how's the enemy gonna go? Yeah, look at the, that that guy's stuck. I think we have a flaw to the game. If I make enough barriers, then they're not gonna be able to get past. I do like that canceled shot. <laughs> oh, it does break down. Wait, how did I break it? Oh, okay, okay. I gotta shoot and walk over it? Okay, so you can remove them, but it's not, um... It doesn't feel like it's breaking down slowly like the mushrooms in Centipede.
Uh oh, what does this mean? No, don't kill me! Does that mean we finished the level or we died? <laughs> I'm a little confused. So we can get rid of it, but it, you have to can shoot while you're moving forward over it. And that's it. But check a look at the animation of the enemies. And the, the way that you control the joystick's pretty good over the uh, spider. <laughs> oh, okay, maybe they ended the level? What a weird way to end the level, where the our, our spider children cover the entire screen. going to happen. Yeah, one of the big things this has going for it is the control. Able to move all the way around the screen for a shooter. And it just feels really, really good. It's pretty smooth. See, I just trapped two in there. And let's see if I can get them out if I do this. <laughs> yeah, and then they then they're free and they move around the screen. Yeah, I love this kind of stuff. This is like when we saw the variations of Space Invaders and the space shooter just changed a few things like here's Space Invaders but now you can split them into two two parts and here's Space Invaders but now the enemies come down slowly, you know, like Galaxian. So uh, this is pretty cool seeing Centipede slowly change into something else. I like it. That's awesome. Uh, so of all the games we've seen up to this point, I'd say three stars, maybe even three and a half. Depending on, because it's a home computer game on the Commodore VIC-20. And for uh, for space games, it, it is the same idea or concept every time, but just how well it controls. I'll do three and a half stars for Arachnoid on the Commodore VIC-20. Love it. And let's move on to our last game of the evening. Yes, here we go, the BBC Micro. I believe this is our third game on the BBC Micro. This is Arcadians. Let's take a look at Arcadians. Going to UK, starting with the box. The BBC Microcomputer Model B by Acornsoft Games. We flip it over in the back and it's all business here. A game on disc for the BBC Microcomputer Model B. We have the Arcadians, our mission to destroy all aliens. The Arcadians chant as they fly in convoy overhead without warning. Some of them suddenly swoop down towards you, take aim and fire while avoiding their deadly dive bombing tactics. This game is for one or two players and it uses keyboard or joysticks. Yes. The Ar or not the Ar it's not the Arcadians, it's just Arcadians. Any other artwork we have for Arcadians? There's our cassette tape we're going to be popping in and disc also. R more rare to have the disc. We're most likely going to be playing on cassette, that's for sure. We have a few different ways we could boot it up. Let's go to the United Kingdom and play some Arcadians in the beginning of April 1982. How does Arcadians fare? What is Arcadians? Acorn Soft. Okay, so now this one is one or two player game. Oh, you can turn sound on and off with Q. Oh, okay, Q and S. And then controls are caps lock and control and return fires. Okay, let's try it out. They have a high score ta table too. Wow, listen to the sound on this. I gotta get me one of these BBC micros. All right, so what is that? Uh, oh, that's right, caps lock. <laughs> it is Galaxian. Check it out. This is so great. Now, the other other two games that we've seen on the channel for the BBC Micro were text adventure or interactive fiction games. So this is our true, we are playing some arcade games in England on the BBC Micro. This is the best arcade game you could play at home so far in, in, in Europe. Well, no, not in Europe, in on your BBC Micro. So if your parents duped up to the government and got the BBC Micro because, you know, everyone was supposed to buy Acorn's new new computer because the government was wanting everyone to learn things, you would be able to play this on it. I mean, look at the colors. And it uses joystick. If you did have the joystick for it, that's awesome.
Hey, hey, welcome, Walker Sheets. I am winning. We're in the UK playing the third game we've seen for the BBC Micro, the Arcadians. Can we do fire? No, we'll just do player one again. Yeah, we've seen um, only two other games that were text adventure games. So this one's a arcade game that you can play on your BBC Micro. It is Galaxian. The only other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to see two players because I'm pretty sure it's alternating play. But I want to see if it's two at the same time. Because if it is, that would be an even bigger one. To plug two joysticks into your BBC Micro, you would be the most popular kid on your block in England. Or just die really quick. I'm doing keyboard controls, which is caps lock to move left, control to move right. Which makes no sense on our keyboards, but you gotta look down at your BBC Micro keyboard and then it would make a little bit more sense. But it's still strange because the other arcade games that I played on the BBC, they usually control with A and Z, or uh, Z and X. And so it's strange that you did the keyboard, uh, or the caps lock, and control. Then the usual control scheme, yeah, we'll just die. I wanna see if two player is alternating. Game over, player one. Okay, is two player at the same time? Or is it alternating like a arcade game? Player one, it is not. Okay, so it's alternating play. Gotcha. I was high, having high hopes. But still, I'd say for Arcadians, of all the games we've played up to this point, that is so great. Uh, I would say above average for considering all the games we played on all the computers all over the world, it's still a slightly above average game considering the other ones. All right, so that's where we put our video game playing on pause. Hit the break key. Hit escape on your Atari home computer, whatever you want to do. If you were in 1982, what would you rate these games on our scale of one to five stars? That's it for today, and like I always say, I'll see you in the arcades. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel and joining me on my quest to play every single video game in order of release. We'll be streaming live every weekday at 9 p.m. Central, so join us and let us know if we missed any games along the way. This video would not be possible without LaunchBox, RetroArch, and MAME. Tell all your friends there's some crazy guy named Chronologically Gaming trying to play every single video game. We have links down below that'll send you to places like our Discord and Patreon, and one that says all the video games we've ever played. If you go there, it's a list of everything, and you can click right to the game you want to see. Chronologically Gaming is the name to look for. We are Perpetually Retro, and we will catch you next time.